to let's uh, start working on uh, on on this um, on this assignment, right? That asks asks us to create schemas and models to be able to manipulate uh, user entities and website entities and uh, all the other different entities, pages and widgets, uh, be able to store them permanently in a, in a database, right? In this particular case, we're going to be using uh, MongoDB, right? Uh, so let's uh, follow along uh, what we we have here uh, that, that shows here in the in the uh, in the assignment. Uh, we're going to be creating. We're going to be doing all our work uh, under the assignment directory outside of the um, outside of the public directory, right? We had started working under there, uh, creating services, right? That uh, interacted with the uh, um, interacted with the browser as the browser produced several HTTP requests. Uh, and we were handling it here on the on the server side, uh, so we're going to be adding to this uh, so that um, instead of um, instead of storing the data in uh, in RAM, right, you, storing it in the in the server's uh, uh, memory, instead we're going to be storing it in the uh, in the database, right. So we're going to replace, uh, we're going to refactor this service, right, so that instead of using this, uh, all these functions, right, the delete user, the update user, the create user, all of these, right. Uh, instead of manipulating the, the array, they're going to go out to the database. All right. Uh, so currently, let's see where we are with the with the assignment. We are um, we are here, right? We go to login. Uh, currently, if I try to log in, um, Bob and Bob, uh, that is going to come to the to this service and it's going to look for the user, uh, find user by credentials. Right? It's going to come in here and uh, and retrieve the user. Uh, if I try to log in instead or register as a new user, uh, that is going to go into into this this one over here. Create user in the in the server, right? Uh, and it's going to parse it out from the body and it's going to push it onto this array of users, correct? Uh, and once I and then it's going to navigate me to the profile page and the profile page is going to come back to the uh, to the service looking for a particular user. By a particular ID, right? It passes this ID. The controller on the client side passes the ID to the server. The server looks up the the uh, that user ID uh, from the from the current uh, array of users, right? And then it returns the, um, the 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 user object, and it gets displayed over here. Correct? So let's let's work on those two things for now, right? Being able to create a new user and then retrieve a user that that exists, right? So, but instead of using the array, we're going to be using uh, the database. Okay? All right, so let's do that. Uh, let's see. So first of all, let's um, uh, we're gonna have to start. Um, we're gonna have to create, uh, like we showed yesterday. We're gonna have to create use mongoose right to create a schema and a model right to be able to uh, hold that data on the on the uh, in the database right. So we're gonna be doing that work inside of a new directory called the models directory. Uh, and in here, we're going to have a model for each one of the entities that we want to uh, persist in the database. Right? Uh, so for instance, we're going to have a, a directory for users, uh, another uh, directory uh, for a website, right? and so on and so forth. You know, one directory per uh, type of entity. And inside of each one of these, we're going to have a, a schema and a uh, model uh, file. Right? The schema is going to hold uh, the description, all the data types that make up, that describe a user, uh, and the model is going to provide a uh, an API that allows us to interact uh, with that schema, right, and create new instances, retrieve instances, update them, and whatnot. Okay, uh, here in the in the assignment, we give you um, uh, uh, what the files, what what the what the files should be, right, and their names. Uh, so, for instance, we're going to have user schema server, we're going to have user model server, right, under user directory, under the models directory. Mo okay, models. I, I chose plural, which is fine. Uh, and for the for the uh, user schema, uh, these are the properties that we suggest. These are the minimum properties. Although you know you're free to uh, choose other other um, attributes you if you think uh, you want you want to add them uh, here. Okay. Uh, so let's let's start creating the schema for the user. All right. So in the user directory, we're going to create a new JavaScript file, and we'll call it user dot uh, schema dot server dot js okay, and let's uh, close all others uh, and uh, and let's start creating the schema for this 
Right, so to create the schema, like we did yesterday, right, we, we, we're going to require mongoose first. Right, so we're going to grab mongoose. Mongoose. Uh, once we have mongoose, we can create an instance of a schema that we can then uh, populate and give it all the, very, all the various uh, properties and, and, uh, and data types. So we can create here a user schema. So we can say uh, mongoose.schema and, and then provide the various data types, that the, the different fields that we want to describe a user. So it will be a username, it will be a string, uh, um, password will be a string, and then first name will be a string, uh, then last name, and so on and so forth, right? Um, we can also add uh, some uh, some other other things such as the data that it was created. So date created, right? So we'll say date, uh, and, and uh, here it's suggesting that uh, we uh, we keep track of the list of of websites. Okay, meaning uh, there's there since there's a relationship between uh, developers and websites, right? We need to encode that somehow, right? And there's there's a generally there's a couple of ways that we can encode that relationship. Uh, this is one of them. Right, where the parent in the in the one-to-many relationship uh, can keep track of references, many references to their children. Okay, uh, the other the other way to to implement this uh, is to have the children have references back to the parent. Okay, uh, in a relational database, that's actually pretty much the only way to do it. Right, to have the children have references to the parent. Right, and we typically do that uh, having uh, the child uh, have a foreign key back to the primary key of the parent. Right. Uh, in, a, in an object-oriented programming language such as Java or .NET, or, uh, typically the relationships, you, it's backwards, right? You have the parent have references to its children, right? So you would, if, you, if you have a user, um, uh, you, know, you would have it be aware of all the, all, all the websites that it's related to. Or a website would contain an, an array of pages, and a page would have an array of, uh, of widgets and so on and so forth, right? It's the parent who has references to the children. Um, and uh, uh, so it's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit different, right? How you would do it in a, in a relational database and how you would do it, uh, uh, um, implement it in a, in, in an object-oriented um, uh, fashion, right? But but MongoDB allows you to do it both ways, right? You can you can you can uh, choose to have uh, the parent have references to the children or the children have references to the parent. Here I'm going to ask you to do it both ways, uh, even though you would only do it one way typically. Um, uh, only, only for practice, right? Only for practice, just to, just to practice being able to um, encode it uh, in either way, right? Uh, so we'll come back to this a little later, right? On how to create that relationship between uh, users and their websites. Okay, we can do that uh, in, the, in the next uh, lecture. All right. So we have the schema here. We, um, uh, we're, we're pretty much done with the schema. Um, we do want to make the schema available to others who want to use it. Uh, it is it is a uh, good practice to have schema uh, def definitions um, uh, in their own you know, separate file, right? So that if anybody else wants to reference the schema, they can they can use it uh, independently of uh, of other other artifacts, right? So we're going to um, we're going to export this. Uh, we're going to export the user schema. Uh, that means that anybody who requires this file will have access to this declaration of the schema. Correct? Right? And so we're, we're done with the schema. We'll come back to it a little later. Right, we'll come back to it a little later. Let's now focus on the model for that, for that user. So we have, um, now we're going to have a, a, a file for declaring the model.